All right, well, welcome to the channel. And today I just wanted to cover uh, some basics of, of how to diagnose why your bike won't start. So I just overhauled a CRF 450 and uh, had a little issue as I always do with a lot of these builds in terms of getting the carb tuned, uh, getting the fuel system, double checking it to make sure everything is clean. And then of course, looking at the, the condition of the head and uh, air intake, exhaust, valves, seating, it all works together with the carburetor uh, on these older carbureted CRF 450s uh, to uh, affect the ability of, of these things to run. And uh, so I'm gonna just, I got a little video just going to show you how to fine tune your carbureted CRF 450, stay tuned. Today, I'm going to cover a little bit about getting your uh, 450, 250 to start and run right, especially after a rebuild. I do a lot of these builds, and afterwards, it, it, it's a bit of a learning curve to get these things tuned right. Um, the first thing I think that's, that's fairly easy is to inspect your, your gas tank, uh, your, your pet cock is hooked to uh, the line that goes up uh, into this filter that goes up into your gas tank. Take that out of the bottom of your tank. There's two uh, small eight millimeter bolts here. Pull them out and uh, have a look at this filter and this O-ring. Of course, this, this tank, this build I did, this 450 build, I bought a lot of these parts off of eBay. Uh, I get a lot of these parts from a guy down in Encinitas and that's where I got this tank and, and Petcock and, and the works here in the line. But anyway, it was all full of dirt and grime and sand. And a lot of times these things have been run in the desert or out the dunes. So it's not uncommon. So I cleaned everything off, made sure this filter was clean, made sure this line is clean. Um, you can easily take this pet cock apart by taking uh, these two bolts off, pulling that off and there's an orifice in there and a rubber a piece that that you can pull out of there and clean clean that out all really well and then move on down and uh, I haven't really cut the the line here for this inline filter but I will be installing this inline filter here just to improve the filtration of the fuel after it goes through the petcock all the way to the carburetor the next thing you need to look at is your carburetor all right so we're talking about older carbureted CRFs 450-250, this is your, your FCR carburetor, okay? And uh, there's, there's some things that you need to know about this carburetor, what it takes to get it running right. And in order to really diagnose it and figure out what's going on, not everybody's an expert, and that's why I do a lot of these videos, just, just to help the normal, everyday Joe, okay? A lot of guys, a lot of times you gotta take this to a mechanic or a guy that can work on it. A lot of guys work on it themselves. Some don't, some don't just because they don't know. Uh, and really, I, that's what I wanna do with these videos is just, just to help people uh, that are just common, ordinary people who don't typically maybe wouldn't work on these, but your bike won't run. You, you don't wanna take it to a mechanic. A lot of mechanics in our area are act, actually backed up. So just wanna show you some basics about what to look for in these carburetors. So if you take the flow bowl off here, the flow bowl is going to contain uh, some major, uh, some major uh, components. And we're gonna go through that here. And I'm just actually gonna take with a 17 millimeter wrench, just take this uh, flow, flow bowl plug out. And it's always good especially if you haven't been riding your bike, you're not gonna ride your bike for a while to pull this, this plug out while it's on the bike and, and drain your flow bowl. Uh, if you're not running BP gas or something with some heavy duty detergents in it, uh, it, can, it can plug things up and clog things up. So when you take this off, you can actually see there are two jets in here, okay? Now, a lot of you guys may know uh, Jay Clark, Jay, has some really good videos out here um, that I will post into the link uh, below. 
but into the description below. But those two jets, you can't quite see uh, the, there is a, okay, this is the main jet. And then there, down in there, you can't quite see it all that well because the lighting isn't all that good. Uh, but there is a subjet, okay, down in here, a subjet. All right, and so the first thing you have to do, and, and this is where the manual comes in, really handy. All right, well, this is a really useful uh, illustration in the manual. And along the bottom, you can see the uh, throttle positioning from eighth to quarter to half to three quarter to full throttle. The pilot screw and the pilot jet are critical at the starting point. So you have to get those two things right to get the thing to start and run co correctly. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong. The jet needle and the, and the taper on the jet determine your mid throttle response. And a lot of uh, rebuild kits have new jet needles in them. So the condition of your jet needle that goes into your main jet uh, is very important. So then your main jet, which is on the bottom, which I pointed out earlier, uh, is basically your half throttle to your full throttle response. And if your main jet is not large enough, uh, then your, your bike isn't going to rev and, and run right and have the power that you need um, at that mid to top end of the throttle response. All right, this is an illustration out of the book showing C shows the main jet, A shows the subjet or pilot jet, and B shows the fuel screw, which I recommend getting uh, an external fuel, fuel screw. When you take the top of the carburetor off where it says FCR, you can actually pull this um, needle out. And this is the, the assembly that uh, contains your jet needle. And this is the positioning of the jet needle. So position number four is what we're gonna talk about a little bit later, but that's where you want that clip to be in when you take that assembly apart. Uh, the positioning of that jet needle is the fourth thing that is very important uh, in setting your carburetor. So there's four things that are important. This chart shows it the best. Along the left-hand side is your elevation, and then you'll see the main uh, elements are your pilot screw setting, your pilot jet, your jet needle, and your main jet. Your pilot screw and your pilot jet are going to determine your idle and you're starting uh, the ability of the bike to start. Along the top is uh, the temperature. So as you see where I have circled on this uh, CRF 450, 2002 CRF 450, uh, I'm, I'm at 80 degrees along the top and I am sea level to 999 feet here in San Clemente. So I want a uh, pilot screw to be set at one and a quarter turns, I want a 45 pilot jet. I want the jet needle set at position number four and a main jet of 175. I have found to be extremely helpful, all right? So you've got some, the, the main uh, portions, and I haven't taken this apart yet, but I will. The main portions of this carburetor are in the needle, the needle valve, okay, so this, this diaphragm here comes up and there's a needle that goes down into the main jet, right? That's a main component. The pilot screw, which I have put an aftermarket uh, screw on here, fuel screw, okay? Uh, stock, they come with a, a screw that you actually have to put a screwdriver down in and turn it, but I recommend getting one of these, one of these uh, aftermarket pilot screws. Okay, your pilot jet, the size of your pilot jet, that's going to tell, that's going to give you your uh, throttle response. So your pilot screw is going to set. You've got your idle here, okay, on this this screw here, and then you've got this fuel screw that's going to set the ability of the bike to run at a certain RPM and and run well and it's going to affect the throttle response and uh, everything else. So this pilot, this pilot screw is very important. Pilot jet, the pilot jet 
affects your zero to quarter inch throttle response. Okay, position of your needle in here is going to determine the ability of your bike to run from zero to almost a half throttle, but it's gonna, it's basically going to affect your throttle response. Your jet needle is from an eighth to a three quarter, and then your actual main jet affects your uh, throttle response from a half to full throttle, okay? So your main jet. If you don't have a big enough main jet in there, you're not gonna have enough throttle, uh, you're not gonna have enough flow going through and uh, enough gas to get you to where you're going. It's, it's gonna cough, it's gonna sputter, uh, it's just not gonna run right. You've got to have the right main jet and pilot jet or subjet combination at each elevation and temperature. So they all work together, okay? So you've got your screw, your, your, your fuel screw here, setting. You've got the pilot jet size. You've got the main jet size. You've got the jet needle position. And that's all going to affect how your, uh, and I'll put up a jet needle uh, picture right now. And the positions on the needle. So the, uh, and then I'll show you uh, here, your slider with your needle. So all of these work together to get the right carburetor setting. And there's a chart in here that I have found uh, just a, immensely useful and invaluable. Okay, and I'm gonna show it in the video right here. Okay. So you've got for a, a 2004 CRF 250, 2005 CRF 250, there's different, there's different settings and carburetor tuning specifications. And then I'm gonna show right now the picture for the 2002 CRF 450. And if you, as you can see, on the left-hand side, you have your elevation, sea level to 999 feet, 1,000 feet to 2,500 feet, so on and so forth, all the way up to 10,000 feet. And then all across the top, you have your temperature, zero to 21, minus one to 20, 19 to 40, uh, 39 to 60, 59 to 80, 79 to 100, and 99 to 120. So here in Southern California, I live in San Clemente, but uh, most of the time I ride out of Paula if I'm riding. And so that's really gonna be really that sea level, probably to thousand, maybe a little bit more than a thousand, but it's gonna be sea level to a thousand feet. And so I look at the positioning of the pilot screw, the pilot jet, the jet needle, and the main jet, all right? It's gonna tell you what main jet size you need. So if I go over, most of the time I ride in uh, you know, the winter time from October through March, our temperatures are running 59 to 80 degrees, okay? So I want a main jet of 175. I want a pilot jet of 45. And with those two jets, I need the needle set at the fourth position on the needle adjuster, which it is. And then I need to set this pilot screw here, this screw, it's an aftermarket screw, and I can actually adjust that on the bike. I need to set that, I need to go all the way in. You see it was out quite a ways, and I'll tell you the story by, behind that, because you probably, guys probably, if you were on the CRF 450 page, you saw me post a video not too long ago asking for your opinion on how far out this needs to be. So this was almost four turns out. It was about three and a half turns. Okay, so the book tells you that you need to be at a turn and a quarter. So there's one turn and a quarter. All right. So you screw it all the way in, close it all the way down, then you turn it out one turn and a quarter. All right, so if you go by this book and you have all of your subject, 
and your main jet, subjet or pilot jet, at the right orifice size, the thing should run correctly, given that it's clean. That's the other thing. If it's not running right, pull it apart. And uh, if you're confident in doing that, or take it somewhere uh, where you can have it clean. But all of the ports need to be clean. Don't ever put anything into the main jet or the subject. Don't try to unplug it with a piece of wire or anything because it's going to affect the flow and it's not going to run right. So I, I recommend going down. I For 25 bucks, I get an OEM, uh, an OEM uh, gasket here. And a lot of times, you know, Alball sells these kits, uh, car rebuild kits, and nine times out of 10, the gasket they give me is not, it's, it's too flat and it leaks, okay? So the only that gasket that I can get to work, and my mechanic recommended this, is to get an OEM gasket, all right? So spend 15 bucks, get yourself the right gasket, and then you can get the, um, I'm gonna show you here, and I'm gonna tell you why I got these, okay? There's a story behind all this. So uh, this is the 175, according to the book, and this is the 45 pilot jet, all right? Here's the main jet, and you can get that at your local dealership. There's your main jet, it's a 175, and it's got writing right here, 175, all right? And then you've got your subjet here, or your pilot jet, all right? And it is going to say on there 45. I'm getting too close. But right here, 45. So it's etched in there, all right? This is installed with a screwdriver. This is installed uh, with a six millimeter or six and a half millimeter socket, okay? So I will do that installation a little bit later when I'm ready to, um, to do this. I'm gonna change these out because, now here's the story. I took this to my mechanic and I cleaned the carburetor and put the carb rebuild kit back um, in there and, and used that. And took it to my mechanic and had him kind of check my work and, and he ended up pulling the mid body off and he ended up replacing the sub the subjet. I don't believe he replaced the main jet, which already was a 175. But he replaced the subjet, a pilot jet, with a 42. Okay, now, and this this is where I'm going to put the video to uh, Jay Clark, to Jay Clark's uh, fuel screw video in the description, and he's going. He has an excellent explanation of how all this works together. Okay, so you've got to connect the four corners of the box. So you've got your needle setting, you've got your main jet, you've got your pilot jet, subjet, uh, and you've got your pilot screw, fuel screw here. Okay? My mechanic took the mid body off. It was this here, and I recommend you do that too. Uh, and it was, it, it needed new gaskets, it needed to be cleaned. Uh, it was packed full of stuff. It, it just wasn't running right. So those are the main parts of your carburetor that you want to look at. Now, the other parts that you want to take into consideration are your squirter, so to speak. Okay, this is your fuel squirter, and the diaphragm is down here on the bottom. There's a little rubber diaphragm in there. And if you see right in there, you can see the light. you can see the little the little squirter. Now, Matt at How To Motorcycle Repair has an excellent video, which I will put in the description, on setting this part of the carburetor to get your squirter right, all right? And a lot of you probably know about the O-ring modification, the O-ring mod. I think it's a number one, number 41, uh, O-ring that you use to wrap around here and connect these two. So the way 
that that this works without getting my my hand in the way all right this when you hit your throttle see how that that black piece moves right away there's no pause setting this screw will uh, affect the sensitivity of your throttle hit and basically if this squirter diaphragm see this is all connected to this diaphragm down here there's a rod that runs up through here connected to this diaphragm and it affects the squirt of this little guy all right so if this is not set correctly you're going to have a bog or it's it's just not going to run right you're going to hit the throttle and it's going to or it could die and that's basically because this squirt has to be timed so that when this slide goes up, when you open the throttle, it doesn't hit the slide. It doesn't squirt too early, but it squirts a long squirt in there. And that gives you that snappy, strong, early thr throttle response. If you don't have this right, you'll get a bog. And it, it's these things are notorious uh, for having a bog. So if you, if you really don't want to fool with this, uh, I would encourage you not to if you like your throttle response and everything's working okay. But if you have a bog and you can't figure out what's going on, okay, look at this and start adjusting this screw so that that, that response is quick. But you don't want to tighten it up too much to where this thing is squirting and hitting this before otherwise your uh, your squirt's not going to be long enough if it's hitting this before it raises uh, you're going to get a short-lived response and it's it's not going to run right the other way all right so uh, that's that's a little bit about about um, about setting these things and and things to take into mind uh, take into account now actually starting it and you can see there that I don't know if you can see if I can get the light right. See how the slide isn't all the way down? Because I, I have the idle set. So when you rebuild these things, you need to make sure that your jetting is correct and that your fuel screw is set to the correct, uh, the correct point of starting point. And I, I, I put this out here on a video where I had this thing idling uh, I had it set at a high idle, and I was trying to set uh, this this fuel screw, and I was just playing around with it. But I, I was pretty much fishing for some comments, and one guy gave a really good comment. Basically, he said, this thing needs to be set, and he was right on. Uh, this thing needs to be set at one and, three, and a third turn, which is pretty close to one and a quarter, and then uh, turn it out as... Uh, and, and set your idle at, um, you know, about 1500 and turn it out until it, until it runs smoothly. And if you turn it out too far, it'll start running rough again and then turn it back into where it's running smooth and then set this thing back at 1200 RPM. So there's a lot of different opinions on what your idle RPM needs to be. I like mine a little higher than that. Um, but I had it set at 2800 and you can't set this thing at 2800 because your, your throttle will not come back to to dead zero and uh, it won't it won't drop the rpms because it's just running too much gas in here all the time now you'll see in here that i do i have the the this set pretty high this idle set and we're just going to actually do a little exercise here so i'm going to reset this entire thing okay and I'm going to unscrew. So here is where, here is where your idle is pushing up on this. All right, and that, this is your throttle. So all that's happening when you set that idle is it's pushing this throttle up to open up this slide. Right? Okay. It's just little incremental amounts. But we'll see where I had it set here. And it was running about 2,800 RPM if you see that video. So we'll go half, one, two, 
three, four, okay? And then we'll see here where it goes away from. So it's still on the diaphragm. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay, now the diaphragm is not touching. So looking in the camera here, I am just going to want one, there's one turn, two, Just a little more than two turns, and now this thing is barely touching. Okay, so case in point, if you get to the point where your bike is not starting and you've got all of your jetting set correctly and it's still not starting, and this is set according to the book, so if you're at our elevation, this is set to one and a quarter turn out, and it's still not starting, which has happened to me, Back this thing all the way off, okay? Back back this idle all the way out. And if you've got it on the bike, you may not know how far to go, but just keep backing it out until you don't feel any more pressure in this and you'll be pretty close, okay? And then that's worst case scenario. Just crack the throttle just a little. And I, as, as routine, uh, before I start my, my 450 or 250, and everybody has their opinion too. I'll give I'll give it uh, basically, you know, two full throttles, and then I'll I'll make sure that it's at a, at the top of the stroke and I'll kick it. Okay. But just back this thing all. If it won't start, just back this thing all the way out, and just kind of grab onto the throttle with your thumb and kick it, and it should just crack that throttle just a little bit, and it should start. That's, that's if you just have no reference point and want to get the thing going. So you've cleaned the carburetor, you've reset all of this, you've checked and inspected your fuel system, uh, and it still won't run, all right? So that, those are the things to go through and look for on the carburetor. I'm gonna be replacing the main jet and the subject on this carburetor, and I'm, I'm pretty much good to go. Complain about this carburetor, so I didn't tell the entire story. My, my mechanic put a 42 subjet in here with a 175. Subsequently, when the thing was running, one and a quarter turn here on the fuel screw with a smaller 42 pilot jet, the book says 45, you're gonna have to turn this thing out further. And it was between three and four turns on because that pilot jet was on this, on this pilot screw because the pilot jet was so small, all right? So if you have a small pilot jet, you're gonna have to turn this thing out a lot further, three turns, four turns, and once you get out beyond three turns, you need to increase the size of your pilot jet so that you can get this thing back. So that's why I'm replacing the pilot jet. I'm replacing the main jet just because I want a new one in there. This was the old used one. Just want a new one in there. Never stick anything in the orifice once again, and, and be careful, these things are brass. Don't over tighten them. Um, they, they hold pretty well in there. Uh, go to the book, uh, those charts that I showed, hopefully they can help you out. If those aren't the charts that you need for your year and model, uh, get yourself uh, uh, the right charts and get yourself in the ballpark on your needle, on your main jet, on your pilot jet, and on your fuel screw, okay? Those are the main things. If you your if your uh, pilot jet is smaller than what the book specs, you're gonna be out further. You're gonna be three or four, two, two, three or four turns out probably on this to get it to run right. If you do it according to the book, you can dial it right in. I've got it a turn and a quarter. I'll have a 45 subjet. I'll have a 175 main jet, and we're good to go. This carburetor's been clean. Um, I backed the idle all the way off. I'll probably turn it in, uh, probably anywhere between five and six turns on the on the idle, just to set it and start it. 
figure out what's going on there, okay? So that is the carburetor. Now we're going to uh, get into... Um... All right, so here's where I had the idle set really high. Uh, I had it set at, at just too high. It needs to be at about 1,500. But uh, as you can see here, I had it at about 2,800. And you want it to uh, basically, as soon as you blow the throttle, return to its normal idle RPM right after, and it wasn't doing that just simply because I had the idle set too high. It was just kind of an experimentation. All right, so here is when I initially started it up right after the rebuild. I had gone through uh, some issues just trying to actually just get it started the first time. And it really uh, boiled down to setting that carburetor correctly. Um, and, and basically, you want the right jetting and you want to set that fuel screw in the right place make sure that your jet needle is set in the right place make sure you do all the diagnostics on your fuel system make sure everything's clean if it still won't start from there uh, you need to go into your head and look at um, the valve clearance and, and the seats and just exactly what's going on there so uh, there's more videos to come I'm actually rebuilding the head on this uh, was not pleased with how the valves were were seating inside the seats. So uh, more to come. There's there's some videos that I'm going to put out uh, discussing diagnosing your head and um, getting everything right. Nine times out of ten, when your bike won't start, uh, it 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 likely is the carburetor or the head. Uh, check your valves. Check your uh, shimming and make sure there's clearance between the valves and the cam uh, and that everything is within spec, uh, but also make sure that the condition of your valves and the way that they're seating into the seats is correct. So more to come on that. I uh, hope this video helped you out. Uh, feel free to DM me with um, any questions.